Welcome to the Big Me Kickoff. I am your host, Kevin Noon. It is Monday, April 22nd, 2024. Been a minute since I've done a show, and I apologize. Uh, as you know, I don't feel like I have much to talk about. I tend not to do shows, and I need to be a little bit better about that, especially since, as the dog is squeezing a toy in the background, we have renewed with our great friends over at No Naturals. So be sure to check out No Naturals. I will put the scroll up here in a second. I don't have my copy in front of me, so I have to read it from the scroll. So bear with me. Are you ready for an entirely different edible experience? Welcome to No Naturals, where we're shattering the stereotype of one-note slow-acting gummies. Forget waiting over an hour to feel the effects. Our gummies are like a sprinter out of the blocks, fast-acting in just 15 to 30 minutes. Picture this. You're just not choosing a flavor. You're choosing your vibe. With five core experiences and six custom combos, you're in full control. Whether it's energy and focus without the crash, a peaceful slumber that lasts all night, a game-changing burst of energy or bliss, a game-changing burst of bliss and euphoria, these edibles are the real deal. I haven't read this in a minute, so I apologize there. Uh, and the best part? You don't need a doctor's recommendation. No natural gummies are dispensary quality and discreetly delivered right to your door. So whether you're craving a productivity boost, a good night's sleep, or some blissful euphoria, say hello to No Naturals. Try them today and use the code HUDDLE10 for 10% off your order at shop.nonaturals.com. So we will bring that up right here. Uh, it is also in the show notes. So thank you again to our friends at No Naturals for sticking with us. As, as, as I've told you before, I, I use the product. I have a hard time getting to sleep a lot of nights. And it certainly helps. Now, I have a hard time waking up, too, sometimes. But it has nothing to do with that. I need to shave. We'll, we'll get there. Um, a lot of little things going on right now. But I wanted to start the week off on the right note. And let's start by talking about the transfer portal in Ohio State. We're going to start with football. We've not seen this mass exodus yet. We've seen a couple people leave. Cedric Hawkins out of Cocoa, Florida, has already left, has already found a home at UCF. Very happy for him. He's a great kid. Coco turns out a lot of talent. It just hasn't worked out for Ohio State as of late players from Coco. But we were led to believe that we were going to see five, six, seven, eight players potentially leave. There's still a lot of time left in the portal, so it doesn't mean that things aren't happening. But where is where has this exodus been? I think some of it has to do with the fact of I think a lot of kids get to Ohio State, and even if they're not playing, like the support system so much, like being a football player at Ohio State, that guys aren't necessarily lining up to leave all the time. And I think sometimes in order to have roster management that works, you may have to kind of prod guys and be like, well, you know, I'm not running you off, but you're probably not going to see playing time. You're fifth team, sixth team, not even really in the mix for special teams. And with all of that, we've not seen Ohio State be very aggressive as quote unquote buyers in the portal. And I think some of that has to do with making sure you have the room. Now, of course, the question is going to be asked, should we worry about 85? Can Ohio State stay under that cap of 85 scholarships? Ohio State will stay under that cap of 85 scholarships, I promise you. But Ohio State also has to be mindful of where things are because it's, I mean, everyone you bring in is one that you're going to have to push out. I mean, I've I've heard Ohio State's at 84 right now. I've heard Ohio State's at 83. I've heard Ohio State's at 85. We don't always know the scholarship status of some former walk-ons. We didn't know that certain guys were on scholarship last year. That's just kind of an internal decision that a program makes if they're going to put some of that stuff out there or not. I think some of it's just on the player. I'm just focused on playing football and trying to get this team better. I, I don't care about personal accolades. You know, I get it, but it makes it makes it a little bit more difficult for those of us who do this for a living to track some of this stuff down. Now, 
One name that we have heard Ohio State connected with is Kyle Ford, the receiver from UCLA, formerly of USC prior. Obviously played under Chip Kelly. There's a familiarity there. Ohio State, not quite as deep at receiver as you may think. Now, and I've said this on other shows, so I apologize if you've heard it, but sometimes there are certain narratives that I just can't get away from. Ohio State is deep in stars. They're not deep in bodies at wide receiver. You lose Julian Fleming. You lose Noah Rogers. These are guys that left prior to the window of when you would expect them to leave. Now, Marvin Harrison Jr., that was expected that he was going to leave. Xavier Johnson, he was out of eligibility. That was expected. Ohio State tries to take three receivers last year. Jeremiah Bethlehem gets away on signing day to Oregon. So Ohio State comes in one under the number that it thought it was going to pursue. And there was a minute out there that Ohio State looked like it was going to take four receivers. and ends up with two. So let's just say one plus coming up, you know, so they, they come up one short plus they lose the two bodies. So are they down three in the body count? Maybe. I mean, potentially. If you bring in a Kyle Ford who is pretty much, you know, at the end of his eligibility, that doesn't affect you in your pursuit of Jamie French, in your pursuit of DeCorian Moore, all of these types of players. It's a one-year type of situation. So I do think that there is something to it. Now, Kyle Ford is going to come into a room that is going to be deep with talent. But Ford also would be somebody who has years of playing experience, not going to necessarily have to work with him on wide receivers have to block and do some of these other things that are not quite as sexy as catching touchdowns. So we'll see. Now, so that's there. Ohio State misses out on Miami of Ohio place kicker and uh, award-winning you know, kicker from there, Nicholson, I think was his last name. Uh, he ends up going to Alabama, and there's a lot of angst about losing a kid who was going to an Ohio college to Alabama. People have been very quick to point out to me that Ohio State missed a 40-yard field goal in the spring game. And let's not get too far away from Ohio State missing a 50-yarder to advance to the championship game against Georgia. That's all valid. I'm not saying anything to diminish those comments. If this team is a team that is going to have a game decided by a kick, then maybe it's not as good of a team as we think it is. And look, playing in a 12-game schedule, we're not even going to get into 13, 14, 15, 16. There's going to be a day on that schedule where you probably just don't have it, and you're going to have to win a close one. Not only once, that's, you know, that could happen three, four times. You just don't know. I think it would be a tremendous safety net to have a kicker competition for Ohio State to feel better about 40 plus. You watch the NFL these days, you have guys making 63 yarders, 65 yarders. I mean, again, we're talking of the tops of the tops of the tops of the profession. Yet also in the NFL, we see extra points missed. And granted, the extra point rule in pros is different than in college. So I think we have a little bit of an unfair expectation of what every college kicker should be. I personally think that you need to have a kicker that is good from inside of 45 and has a chance to make them from 46 to 51, 52. If you have somebody who can kick at 60, more power to you. But I don't know if Ohio State is good enough right now at kicker, but... 
if we're looking at the transfer portal and there's a finite amount of dollars, if the foundation and 1870 society have been able to squirrel away one, you know, one full unit of money, how much of that needs to go to offensive line? 80% of it, 85% of it, 90% of it. I mean, sure. Wide receiver is great. Getting another running back wouldn't be horrible. Um, you know, maybe, you know, another, another defensive tackle. You never can have enough defensive tackles, but then again, I think you need somebody who's multi-year because I don't think the pressure is on this year. I think it's on next year. How much of that pie are you setting aside for offensive linemen? Because here's the thing, guard or tackle, they're all going to be in demand. And you're, you're going to get in a bidding war. Oh, I hate NIL. I don't like how all of that works. Blah, blah, blah. Pay to play. Well, guess what? That's what it is right now. And there's no, you know, putting that genie back in the bottle. That's just not happening right now. So you're going to have to get out there into a bidding war. And you just can't make dollars magically appear. I mean, at least I can't. If you can, I'll DM you later. So... Would you be willing to put let's just let's just be conservative and say 30 percent, 30 percent of that in a kicker? When you're a team that is supposed to be able to, you know, you're an offensive lineman away from being the juggernaut of 24. Are you going to put 30 percent, 35 percent, whatever of those resources in a kicker? Or are you going to put 40%, 45% in an offensive lineman and then another 40, another 45%, maybe in another offensive lineman? I, I mean, I honestly think that if Ohio State takes four transfers from this point on, two of them need to be offensive linemen. Give me Kyle Ford. That makes a lot of sense. Give me maybe a running back. I don't know. But that running back situation has to be right because it's somebody who's going to know I'm not passing up Trevion. I'm not passing up Quinshawn. I'm going to get pushed by James Peoples. I'm going to get pushed by Sam Williams Dixon. I'm going to get pushed by TC Caffey. Now, somebody who has one year left and, you know, doesn't put the ball on the ground, you know, maybe get you somebody who's your, 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 your short yardage hammer. I'm not saying a fullback per se. I mean, I think you, I mean, yeah, it'd be great to have a Matt Keller, Zach Bourne pre-defense, what have you. But, you know, get get a 225-pound bowling ball who is nearly automatic on and one and, not, and two plays. Third and one, third and two, fourth and one, fourth and two. Get me that. But it all comes down to offensive line. It all comes down to offensive line. One name that Ohio State fans really were looking at, Peyton Kirkland out of Orlando. Goes back into the portal. He's now going to Colorado. That one doesn't surprise me. I wouldn't have necessarily said that, oh, I'm certain it's going to be Colorado. But I think that for him taking a chance on himself and taking a chance on Colorado seems to be on brand. What we saw last year out of Colorado. Yes. They had their great rise at the beginning and people were like, how do I take them for a national championship? And that fool was separated from his money, but they won a couple games early. Ain't going to be so easy this year. I think off the top of the schedule, they have Colorado state, North Dakota state. I don't know. I was talking to some people at a camp. And it doesn't look good. So there are offensive linemen in the portal at this point. Ohio State has to make a decision. Does it want to go guard or tackle? If you go tackle, you kick Josh Fryer inside, and that locks up your guard position. If you go guard, that means you're keeping Josh Fryer outside, that you believe that's the best thing, and you're getting a guard to lock down that guard position. 
You know, I think that they need to get a one-year rental, and I think they need to get a multi-year guy. Multi-year guy just to make up for some deficiencies that we've seen in line recruiting. And I, I want to be very clear. And once again, thank you for watching me here on the Big Me Kickoff. I'm your host, Kevin Noon. It is Monday, April 22nd, 2024. I am, I'm as pro athlete as I can be. I'm never saying this to say, well, this kid isn't any good or that kid isn't any good. Ohio State had a lot of misses under Greg Studrara and even here at the beginning of Justin Fry. You have guys that you have, I mean, offensive line is so important to hit your count. And I think of any position, there's a little bit more of, well, we got to, we got to take somebody. You don't want to sit there and, and make a four-year commitment to a player that you don't think can play. But on the flip side, you're not putting a wide receiver in as your left tackle because you missed your count. You got to have some bodies in there. Well, I think that Ohio State, if you go through some of the most recent classes, and in the ones that have had enough time to do something, you know, it's really easy. Like I saw like a, a post over on the huddle board over at buckeyehuddle.com. Check us out at buckeyehuddle.com, putting an incoming freshman already on the transfer list. I think it was an oversight. It, I mean, a guy who has not had an opportunity to play a down. And, and it's not like, well, he hasn't played a down of college football. He hasn't had the chance to play a down of, of college football. So the the cycle gets so quick. The cycle gets so quick. And people are ready to move on to the next player. And let me tell you, you you can absolutely make your team better via the portal. Absolutely. It is here to stay. You recruit kids out of high school, and then you got to recruit out a portal to fill in the gaps of the mistakes that you've made recruiting out of high school. So I'm not necessarily concerned about that, but there are still going to be cases of where just guys are not they're, – they're not able to play at this level. I mean, and that's fine. Spoken from somebody who couldn't play at any level. I couldn't play at any level. I played tennis. I was much better at that. So uh, I digress there. Let me kind of go through my notes. Oh, uh, I have so many notes, and we're already at 17 minutes. I may save some of this for another show, but we'll go through this quickly. NFL Draft Week is this week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I think. Or is it Friday, Saturday, Sunday? It, it's this week, regardless. And the first round is night one. And Marvin Harrison Jr., spoiler alert, will go in the first round. Is he the first receiver off the board? I think it was just based on a talent thing, yes. I think that there are teams, though, that are outsmarting themselves and looking at the receiver from Washington, the receiver from LSU. We know that a lot of dumb information comes out at this point, this final week of the cycle. Arizona seems to be a perfect fit. You'd reunite with Paris Johnson out there. It wouldn't be bad. Arizona suddenly got a lot less crowded in terms of, of the pro sports market as the uh, Coyotes are moving to Utah. So there will no longer be an NHL team in Arizona. But what happens if Arizona trades out of that four position? Could Marvin go five to New England? Does he start to slide? Do all the receivers start to slide? I mean, I'm hearing all this stuff about what a quarterback heavy draft it is. And obviously with Caleb Williams, Drake May, some of these other names, even that dude up north, who I think that if you take him in the top 10, you just signed your unemployment papers as a GM. But, you know, with that, with that being said, I will be interested to see – what kind of interest is there and if Arizona moves down? You know, there have been people that have said, well, Chicago picks again at nine. I don't see any circumstance where Marvin is there at nine. Now, if a slide starts to happen, if Arizona moves out of there and another quarterback goes, if a quarterback goes at four, does that force New England at five, you know, to look at, 
what it's doing there. Does does it have a quarterback of the future? Take Tom Brady out of the equation and, oh, no, we suck again. So I'll be interested watching this, but you will get full coverage over at BuckeyeHuddle.com of the draft. I plan on doing at least one show talking about draft picks. I probably will wait until after the second and third rounds. So I'm just not talking about Marvin. I don't necessarily want to do an NFL completely driven show. I know that there are more NFL fans out there than there are college fans, but I guarantee you of who watches my channel, there are more college fans than NFL fans. So I'm not going to turn it into that. Uh, did you watch any spring games this year? I, I have not done a show really talking about Ohio State spring game, but I did watch Team Up North. And let me tell you, I was not overly impressed. And again, we play the zero-sum game of if the defense plays well, well, then, geez, I mean, the offense must stink and vice versa. But I was not overly impressed with the quarterbacking up there. I think Donovan Edwards is pretty solid as a running back. Saw the defense make a couple of plays, but I also saw a lot of throws that were not you, you couldn't defend because they weren't near anybody. I am not going to watch spring game and make wild extrapolations of this is what the season is going to look like because of what I saw in the spring game. What I didn't see in the Michigan spring game were fans in the stands. I think it's just kind of a unique phenomenon for, to Ohio State and a couple of other programs that have just so many people who want to come out and watch a spring game. Wasn't the case up in Ann Arbor. Watched a little bit of the Illinois spring game. It was like I was watching a different sport in a lot, a lot of regards. Um, you know, it was a little bit more wide open, but I was also because I don't think the defense was very good. Illinois kind of went down the tank when uh, Ryan Walters left to go to Purdue to be its head coach. So what are your thoughts on spring games? Let me know in the comments. And then we're going to do a little quick basketball roundup just to get us to the end of the show. I was afraid I wasn't going to have anything to talk about. I was going to go 12 minutes and then be like, well, I don't know what else to talk about. But I, I wrote a lot of notes. Um, Roddy Gale has committed to go to Michigan. That is a big slap in the face to a lot of Ohio State fans and even members of the team. I mean, you are who you are, and we're not in the days where you could veto a transfer anymore. So every school is wide open. But just on the heels of the Tony Alford going to Michigan thing, now you have Roddy Gale going to Michigan. What's in the water? What exactly is in the water? Ohio State also got the news uh, over the course of the weekend that Felix Sakpara is entering the transfer portal. Felix went to the point to say that he was staying only within a couple of weeks to change his mind to leave. There is widespread belief that the, the addition of Aaron Bradshaw was probably the differentiation point and Akpara now is leaving. So Ohio State has two spots left, probably needs two wings. I think they're good at guard. I think you need to have I think you needed to have a wing even with Akpara. God forbid he would have transferred at that point for certain. And so you need a wing to replace Akpara, and I think you need another wing just to fill out your roster. And then I'll, I'll kind of finish on my thoughts about uh, Jake Diebler because I saw on the huddle board, well, I thought they brought Jake Diebler in to keep the keep the balance of the roster, and they've only managed to keep a couple with Scott, Scotty Middleton leaving and you know some of these other transfers. Well, I don't necessarily know what the expectation is. I mean, everybody's saying that Ohio State could have gotten Aaron May, who's gone to Michigan. We won't know. We won't know at this point. Did Ohio State make a passive offer at some point and it wasn't in the right ballpark? I mean, why why did that go that way? I, I you know, I don't know. I mean, if you listen to Ross Bjork, Jake Diebler kind of was the candidate after his interview. It that, you know, he could be our guy. It's pretty much a paraphrase of what Ross Bjork said to the search committee. So I, I don't know. I, I don't know what, you know, there are people who are upset with roster management under Jake Diebler of losing Akpara. Well, if you believe that Akpara left because of bringing in Aaron Bradshaw, I don't know what's going on there because you lose Zed Key and you suddenly have a team where you're really relying upon Austin Parks, who's still very wet behind the ears to, as a size guy. So 
everybody wants to have their minutes. Oh, I want to play 28, 31, whatever minutes. Felix Akpara was foul prone. He would pick up fouls in bunches. He could go 17 minutes without picking up a foul, and then he could go 17 seconds picking up two. So if you're upset that they're bringing in, and this is hypothetical, you're upset they're bringing in somebody who you feel is a little redundant to what it is you do, okay, you, yeah, I think you do question it, but if Felix gets into foul trouble most games, what is Ohio State supposed to do there? Zach Eady is leaving Purdue, but guess what? They have a couple more seven-footers on that roster. You've got to have a team that can be able to, to do some things there. I mean, yes, we saw Ohio State go with a small lineup and give Edie fits when Ohio State upset Purdue in Columbus. But I just don't know how how Jake Diebler is supposed to make everybody happy. And you can't. You can't make everybody happy. And I could use some wild platitudes, and I've gotten people who have messaged me and it's like, oh, you're being unfair. You're taking way too much poetic license here with your platitudes. What are you, you know, what are you doing? Be better. I'm being better right now. So I won't necessarily get into all of that. But I, uh, the point is, is that Jake goes out and gets Aaron Bradshaw, which is a coup for the Buckeyes, in my opinion. I mean, Aaron was hurt a lot of last year, is still very slight, but we see a lot of tall, skinny guys in the college game, which is kind of how it works a lot of times. I, I mean, he makes them better. Obviously, the loss of Akpara hurts Ohio State, but you just have to keep plugging away. You just have to keep plugging away and looking for the for the, for the the right fit, and I think that that's going to be a couple more wings, and I think it's going to be a pretty exciting team. Now, Ohio State fans were not happy with Jeff Goodman, who said that with the addition of Gale, that Michigan is immediately a, an NC2A tournament team especially as the tournament's been a little elusive to Ohio State past couple of years. I think that's a pretty wild jump. Jeff Goodman watches a lot more basketball than I do, but I watch a good amount. They were horrible last year. They were horrible. It's going to be a, a brand new roster, brand new head coach. You don't know. But you can't but you don't know works both ways. Well, they they've got to be better. I guess but there's 10% better and 80% better. I think it's going to be more than 10%. I think it's going to be less than 80%. And I'm focused on what Ohio State's going to be. And until Ohio State has its roster completed, it's really hard to extrapolate. You don't go 13 deep over the course of the season. So you can be like, well, do you really need to see 12 and 13? Well, I think that 12 and 13 really need to end up being like number four on the team and like number six on the team or number seven on the team. I think both of these spots are positions that are going to need to be contributors just based on the construction of this team. But we'll have time to talk about that here on the next show. We've gone almost a half hour, which is my goal here on the Big Me Kickoff. I want to thank our friends over at nonaturals.com. Use code HUDDLE10. Get 10% off of your order delivered discreetly and directly right to your door. Fantastic products. I cannot recommend them enough. Fantastic products. Fantastic people. Buckeye-owned business. Support them. You know you want to. I won't, I won't tell. We're not here to judge. But I told you, I'm a customer too. But until next time, coming back to you two more times this week, three times a week. That's the deal. That's the deal. Until then, I want to thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.